to the Road to WrestleMania, a new series. This is kind of the first episode, kind of the second. Basically, the day after the Royal Rumble, I put together an episode of Raw, intended to be a one-off. But, having caught up with what's going on in the WWE during the course of making that video, I wanted to see through my road to WrestleMania. I don't want to do a week by week, and the mod wasn't quite set up for a longer term save, so I booked the Smackdown after Royal Rumble in that game, which should be on screen now, and then made a few edits in the mod to be able to start a new save with the intention of going all the way up to WrestleMania. The idea is that I'll talk through the key shows along the road and fill in the gaps during the course of those videos. At the moment, I intend to put out this episode of SmackDown, definitely the Super Showdown and Elimination Chamber cards, and then important key episodes of SmackDown and Raw, including the Go Home shows. Then, of course, there'll be WrestleMania and possibly the Raw after WrestleMania. With that said, let's get into Friday Night SmackDown and what would be the 7th of February 2020 episode. Smackdown begins with a recap package from last week before the commentators introduce everybody to Friday Night Smackdown. They talk about the events of last week as well as promoting the headline for tonight's show announced on that episode last week, the appearance of The Undertaker. The commentators speculate who or what The Undertaker may be here for, but we'll find out later on. First, we go into Miz TV with John Morrison joining The Miz in the ring. Miz says that he wanted The Undertaker as his guest as he was ready to grill him on why he has yet to step up to face The Fiend, but they had to settle for The Usos and Roman Reigns. Reigns comes out and suggests that maybe he should be the man going after The Fiend, but Miz tells him to be careful what he wishes for because he knows better than anybody. The Usos added that since they were out here face to face with the number one contenders, they had a question for The Miz. They wanted to know if he knew why The New Day had been ducking them since they came back. Morrison and The Miz object to this, causing a heated confrontation in the ring. Roman Reigns calms things down. He has a better solution than fighting now. A match later in the evening. That's if Miz and Morrison could find somebody who'd want to team with them. Before the opening match of the night, we get a skip between Elias and Braun Strowman. Elias suggesting that those teams involved in the Miz TV segment and The New Day wouldn't stand a chance if Braun Strowman and Elias went for the gold. They proved that in the opening match, defeating the Revival in convincing manner just over six minutes to pick up the victory. Not a good joint for Dash and Dawson, but with one foot out the door, we're not too bothered about doing anything with them long term. After that match, Sami Zayn comes to the top of the ramp. He is joined by Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura. He complains about the destruction that Braun Strowman caused last week when he attacked all three men following his failed attempt to become the Intercontinental Champion. Zayn called Braun a bad loser, despite the fact he'd actually won the match by DQ and vowed that Braun would never get a shot at the IC Championship again. Braun Strowman and Elias then left the ring, brawling with Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura as they reached the top of the ramp. Sami Zayn taking the time to run away. As Braun Strowman and Elias get the better of Cesaro and Nakamura, they pursue Sami Zayn, who, in fairness, is long gone. In the back, we see The Miz and Morrison talking to Sheamus, who they appear to want as their third man in their team tonight. Sheamus says that he'd love to get his hands on Roman Reigns, but he's got to deal with that little runt Chad Gable tonight. As they continue talking, Sami Zayn runs past them. Shortly after, Braun Strowman and Elias stomp by, the three men clearing a path as the pursuit continues. A video package looks at the last time The Undertaker competed in a WWE ring. He teamed with Roman Reigns at Extreme Rules 2019, The Undertaker, of course, appearing later tonight. An insert from earlier today shows the frosty reception that Sonya Deville gave her partner Mandy Rose, still upset about her not being at ringside for Sonya's defeat last week to the return in Naomi. Instead, Mandy Rose had gone on a date with Otis to thank him for his help during the Royal Rumble match. Sonya told Mandy that it doesn't matter, she wouldn't be at ringside tonight, and maybe Mandy could ask Otis to join her. Despite Otis's presence at ringside, Mandy Rose is defeated by Nikki Cross in a fairly short match. The real story comes after the match as Otis enters the ring to tend to the hurt Mandy Rose she's laid out after losing to Nikki Cross. Otis strokes Mandy Rose's hair before helping her back to her feet. There is a tender moment between the two. It looks like Mandy may even go in for a kiss with Otis, only for Sonya Deville to come out and come between them. She dragged Mandy Rose to the back, denying Otis the moment that he had been dreaming of. We then get the Firefly Funhouse with Bray Wyatt addressing Daniel Bryan's promo last week about him not knowing where to go next after losing to The Fiend. Bray says that sometimes you just need to go away for a while and find yourself. He has first-hand experience of that and it can truly be the best way to find your true self 
Unfortunately, Bray says with a smile, not everybody knows when to go away. Bray then looks with a knowing smile at a photo of The Undertaker that he has put up on his wall, a clear dig at the dead man. Sami Zayn is seen to have been cornered in the back by Braun Strowman and Elias, but it appears that Elias may have had an attack of conscience as Braun goes to put his hands on Sami Zayn. Elias tells Braun Strowman to stop, with Sami Zayn thanking him for showing mercy. Instead, however, Elias tells Braun, allow me, and hits Zayn with the guitar. Sheamus defeats Chad Gable in the third match of the night after he bro kicks him into the crowd. Sheamus then returning to the ring and winning by countout. During the referee's 10 count, Sheamus tells Chad that in the audience is where he belongs. He isn't fit to compete in a WWE ring. With Sheamus stood tall in the ring, Baron Corbin comes out to address him, applauding he is impressed with what he's just seen from Sheamus. Corbin says that speaking king to former king, he is proud to finally be in the presence of somebody who understands what it's like to face the pressures they face. Dolph Ziggler isn't happy about this and there's some murmurs of discontent between Rude and Ziggler behind Corbin. King Corbin doesn't pay much attention to this, instead saying that he wants to be surrounded by wrestling royalty. He offers Sheamus a part in his king's court, and Sheamus thinks about it, it doesn't look likely that Sheamus will be joining Corbin's group. We then get a recap from last week's show when Charlotte Flair made an appearance on SmackDown. She declared potential interest in Bayley's SmackDown Women's Championship, but wasn't committing herself to which title she would challenge for at WrestleMania. We then get a backstage segment before a scheduled match between Bailey and Lacey Evans. Dolph Ziggler approaching The Miz and John Morrison. He's obviously not happy about what King Corbin had to say earlier tonight and he tells them that he'll be their third man tonight. Bailey defeats Lacey Evans in that match with Lacey unable to capitalise on her momentum gathering victory over Tamina last week. She gave a good fight but was put down in the third match between the two. After the match, Bailey continues to stand over and gloat rubbing in the fact that she has defeated Evans for a second time in two weeks. Naomi comes down to the ring to confront Bailey. Bailey rolling out the ring, narrowly avoiding an attempted rear view from Naomi. We then get a backstage segment where Mandy is asking Sonya Deville, what's going on, why does she keep coming between her and Otis? Sonya clearly wants to say something and is about to when Otis and Tucker Knight show up. Deville, unhappy to be interrupted, storms off. In the main event, Roman Reigns and the Usos beat Dolph Ziggler, The Miz and John Morrison, the New Day joining commentary during the match, Ziggler taking the fall from Roman Reigns after a spear. The three men then stand tall in the ring, the commentators wondering does this give the Usos a claim to a title shot, having just been on the winning side of a match against the current number one contenders to the SmackDown tag team titles. We come back from the final break and The Undertaker comes down to the ring making his long anticipated entrance. This has been hyped throughout the night. The Undertaker says that he is here to call out one man and throughout the night it's been hinted that there'll be something between him and The Fiend. But when the lights go out completely, The Undertaker doesn't get the chance to call out the person he wanted to call out. When the lights come back up, it isn't the confrontation we expected with The Fiend, but instead the icon Sting stands tall in the ring. Smackdown goes off the air with Sting and The Undertaker finally going face to face in a WWE ring. Could the all time dream match finally be set to happen? So it's a B78, a good show overall, helped obviously by that excellent end segment, an A rated 89 segment. Sting and The Undertaker, we're setting that up for Super Showdown, which will likely be the next video of this series. After long last, that match is finally going to take place. It could have happened at WrestleMania, but I think Super Showdown is the better place for these nostalgia matches. That leaves WrestleMania to have better, more current wrestlers on it. Of course, I think if the match went down in real life, The Undertaker v Sting, it would probably be a bit of a disaster. But having seen Goldberg and Undertaker, pretty much anything can go down at Super Showdown.